Hi, today we will be learning about systems of conics. So systems of conics is very similar to systems of linear equations and the fact that a lot of the methods used to solve systems of linear equations are also going to be seen in today's lesson of solving systems of conics. The learning objectives for this lesson is determine the number of possible solutions a system of conics may have and also solve a system of conic equations. Before I move on, I want to encourage everybody to stop the video now and work these problems out on your own, since it's important for you to do the work yourself in order to see how the work is done first. And also, it's, it's important because you could run into some mistakes that it's okay, because we're all learning how to solve systems of conics. So you can go ahead and pause the video now before you see the whole solution. So how do we determine the number of possible solutions for a system of conics? So we could graph, or we could even sketch a graph of each equation. Can you take a guess as to the number of solutions in this system? And how do you know that's the correct answer? What do you, what could you think I mean, what made you believe that was a correct answer? Okay, so just keep that in mind. So the first equation is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of square root 34. The second equation is a line with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 2. So looking at the graph of these two equations, the first equation, x squared plus y squared is equal to 34, is seen in the blue. The second equation, x minus y is equal to 2, is seen in the green. And we can see that these two graphs intersect at these two points. And these are going to be our two points of intersections. And we're actually going to solve algebraically for those two points of intersection. Again, this is our original problem. So what I like to do for what I did first is I used the second equation to isolate my y variable, solve for y, and you're gonna see why that becomes useful in a second. So I, I took this equation and I substituted it in into the first equation for y. So that gives me x squared plus the quantity x minus two squared is equal to 34. I Strip that out, or as you call that, foil it. And that gives me x squared plus x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 34. Then I solve for x, combine like terms, divide both sides by 2, factor that out. That gives me x minus 5, x plus 3 is equal to 0. Solve for x, x is equal to negative 3 and 5. So using the fact that x is equal to x is, is equal to negative 3 and 5, I substituted those x values into my second equation because I want to I want to find those y values. So that gives me so once I do that, y is equal to negative three minus two, or y is equal to negative five. Likewise, on the right hand side, we do the same procedure, and y is equal to three for when x is equal to five. So that gives us our two inter intersection points of negative three, negative five, and five, three. So which method did we use? in this problem that's correct we we did use we use substitution in this problem because we substituted one equation into another equation so great job so going back to a, a graph we could see again these two points of intersections and it's important to double check your work so you could use a graphing calculator like what i'm using now a uh, desmos is really good just um, double check your answers. So as you can see here, our answers match what we had before. You could also double check your answers algebraically by plugging in these values back into either one. And if both sides equal one another, then that's when you know that your answers are indeed correct. Moving on to the next problem. Again, I encourage you to pause the video now and work the problem out by yourself. So if x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, and x squared plus 9y squared is equal to 36. So 
what are the number of solutions the system that the system of conics may have? We could find that out by graphing these two equations. The first equation is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of four. Second equation, the second graph is an ellipse centered at the origin with a horizontal major axis of length 12 and a minor axis of length 4. Again, in the previous section, we learned how to convert from this form to standard form. And standard form gives us the whole description of the graph. So once you go to a graph, these two equations, where we notice that we have four intersection points. We have this blue, which is our circle, which is our first equation. Maybe we have the lips, which is our second equation. And we can see how the circle is centered at zero, zero, which is the origin. It has a radius of four. And also the ellipse is, is centered at the origin. And it has a horizontal major axis of 12 and a minor axis of length four. So now we're going to solve the system. So I multiplied the second equation by negative one. You could also have multiplied the first equation by negative one as well. So the whole goal in this problem is to eliminate one variable. So that, that, is, that is exactly what we're going to do. So once I distribute this negative to the second equation, I'm left with negative x squared minus 9y squared is equal to 36. So I'm going to add these two. So I'm going to add both equations. When I do that, the x variable eliminates, and I'm left when I just add y squared plus minus 9y squared and 16 plus negative 36, which I'm left with negative 8y squared is equal to 2, negative 20. Divided both sides by negative 8, I'm left with y squared is equal to 20 divided by 8, which equals 5 over 2. Taking the square root of both sides, I'm left with y is equal to plus or minus the radical 5 over 2, which equals plus or minus radical 10 over 2, once rationalized. Since, uh, again, I wanted it to solve for y. So I take the first y value, which is positive, which is radical 10 over 2, and I substitute that y value in for the first equation. You could have also chosen the second equation. Both ways are absolutely correct. So once I do that, I'm left with x squared plus radical 10 over 2, that whole quantity squared is equal to 16. So notice in this first equation, I didn't change anything besides that y. So I want to solve for x. So once you solve for x, we have x equal to plus or minus radical 27 over 2, which equals 3 radical 6 all over 2. Now, if we repeat the process with y is equal to negative radical 10 over 2, we substitute that, that y value into the equation. And we solve for x. We get x is equal to plus or minus radical 27 over 2, plus, which equals plus or minus, once rationalized, 3 radical 6 over 2. So that leaves us with our four intersection points that we had said previously that, that this system has four points of intersections, which we can confirm that because we have four points of intersection. So what is the method that we use in this problem? Right, that is correct. We use elimination because we eliminated, hence the word, one variable to solve for the other variable. So to look at this graph again, and to double check our work, we have our four points of intersection, which if we were to convert our points that we solved for, we were to put those as a decimal and round to the nearest hundreds, those values would be exact, those values would be the exact values as these right here. Number three, so we have this system of conics. So what are the possible number of solutions that this system may have? 
Again, I'll really give you guys a second to pause the video and work this problem out on your own. This is problem number three on the system of conics worksheet. So in order to determine the number of possible solutions for this system of conics, let's graph them. So the first equation is a circle centered at negative three, zero, and has a radius of five. Second equation is a hyperbola centered at the origin with a horizontal transversal axis of length four, radical three. Again, we should know by now how to how to determine the description of these two graphs by putting them in standard form. So now, let's graph the system of equations. As you can see, in the blue is our circle, and in the green is our hyperbola, which they intersect at these two red points. So we have two points of intersection. And we're actually going to solve those two points algebraically. So it's our original equation. I isolated y squared, so I solved for y squared from this first equation. So I didn't actually manipulated my terms around. I left with y squared is equal to negative x squared minus 6x plus 16. I then substituted this equation into my second equation. Notice again that I didn't change anything from this equation, only the fact of Instead of, writing, or instead of writing y squared, I'm writing this whole quantity right here. So I substitute that into the second equation. I did a solve for x by distributing the negative 3 into that whole quantity. Combine like terms, factor, and then solve for x. So x is equal to negative 6 over 12 over 5. So I use the knowledge that x is equal to negative 6 uh, or 12 over 5 to solve for the system. I submitted these x values into the first equation because I noticed that I already, I'm almost there for finding my y value. I just actually need to take the square root and I'll be done. You could have also chosen the second equation. Either way is perfectly fine. So now I have y squared is equal to negative times negative six squared minus six times negative six plus 16. So I substituted, I substituted negative 6 into this equation right here. For every x I, I saw, I substituted the negative 6. So once I do that, I simplify that, and I have y squared is equal to 16, take the square root of both sides, y is equal to plus or minus 4. Repeating the same procedure with x is equal to 12 over 5, I get y is equal to plus or minus radical Four, radical negative 4.16, which to me, I, I thought that I might have made a mistake. So what I did now is in order to double check my work, I plugged this y value into the second equation and see what I got. So I actually got the same value. So I noticed that, that because we cannot take, if we do take the square root of a negative, number, we're going to be left with imaginary numbers. And in this case, we're looking for real solutions, inter intersection points that involve real solutions. So because these two numbers are going to be imaginary numbers, those two are not real solutions. So what we could do with x equals 12 over 5, just cancel that out. Since that's not going to give us any real solutions. So now, the points that we're going to be left with is negative 6, negative 4, or negative 6, and 4. So which method did we use in this problem? That's correct. We used substitution because we substituted one equation into the other. So let's, take a look, let's look, look at the graph one more time. As you can see here, we have those two points of intersection, which are which match what we have before: negative six, negative four, and negative six, four. So there are two points of intersection. So good job on that. So before I wrap up, wrap up this lesson, I want to leave you with this question. 
So what is the difference between solving the systems, systems of conics and the systems of linear equations? Is there any similarities and are there any differences? And also, how would, how would solving for systems of conics change if we were to solve for more than two conic equations? So we're almost done. So again, to relook at our learning objectives, first, we determine the number of possible solutions a system of conics may have. And we did that by sketching a graph and, then, and also by graphing well, the system of equations to determine the number of solutions. Also, another learning objective is solve the system of conic equations. So we solve the system of conic equations by using the methods of elimination and substitution in this lesson. So now it's your turn. So go ahead and solve the system of conics. I'll give you a hint. The method that is, that is used to solve the system is something that we already used in this lesson. So I hope this lesson was very helpful for you in terms of learning about systems of conics. If you have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out to me or any math teacher. And that's all I have for you guys today. And have a good day.